Let me get. Come on. Here's Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV taking a look at the Northwood Nash 18, 19, FM, something like that. I believe this is the smallest, shortest of these, yet it still rides on a tandem axle with a suspension package. It's going to make for some easy towing. Now people sometimes ask, hey Josh, what do the letters stand for in that? I mean, obviously, it stands for Formaggio Cheese. Obviously, someone is a little bit of a gourmand over at Northwood. Um, it also may stand for Front Murphy Bed. I don't know. I haven't verified. <laughs> but um, this is actually, when I first saw it on paper, I was like, huh, that's a little unique. And then I realized this is very similar to a Rockwood 2104S, a mini light that uh, I'll leave you a link for it in the video description if you want to see uh, something kind of in the same vein, or Flagstaff calls it a 21BS. And there's some other people who make something like that. But the idea behind this is to give you 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound sack. Now, that being said, this has over 5,900 pounds of sugar in this sack, because if there's one thing Northwood does not do well, it is build light, because they build thick, they build heavy, they build long lasting. That is what I've really come to find and respect from this brand right here. And it, very little of it really translates well to camera. I know that I've seen pictures of these, and I'm like, why is everybody so gaga over how these things are built? And then I got to see them in person, put my hands on them, and I just immediately went, oh, there's, there's another layer to this equation here that I just wasn't well experienced with. And I'm, I, I love that I get a chance to bring all this new stuff to our channel. So what we got here is a front fold down Murphy bed, a big true U dinette slide, a direct facing entertainment center from the slide out. So from the sofa, it's not the best position ever, but I don't know. That just kind of seems to be what Northwood does. They, they, they don't focus on the TV first. They focus on the build and they're very good about maximizing storage all over the place. Also, this little camper's generator prepped. This is something you want to just get away from everything and stay safe from the zombie apocalypse. She's rated. <laughs> So just to help you get your bearings in here, I'm currently sitting in the dinette. So from the dinette seating, this is kind of what you see over here. There's a lot about this RV I like, and there's a lot I think some people will not like. And it's important to remember, this is, this is not something that is designed with like mainstream appeal. This is really designed for some very specific purposes. But first, just to give you a look at the entertainment center, the door side window coverage is decent. But speaking of windows, Let's be totally clear about this because the entry door is not a totally clear window, although that's not a hard swap out. The big window over here in the slide does open for airflow. The forward facing window does not. And here in a Nash, they use the pleated shades. In the Arctic Fox series, they actually use roller shades. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, I think until recently, Arctic Fox itself actually used pleated shades and has recently upgraded to uh, what we're seeing here. Anyway, um, the uh, thing I want to show you here, first and foremost, is the way the Murphy bed works. So let me just kind of finish giving you a look at the living room. That trim piece above the bed right there is one of the best areas where you can look at this and see that it does have a vaulted ceiling, which opens things up dramatically in here because it's a six and a half foot sidewall. Basically, the body dimensions are very similar to something like a uh, like a cougar, um, you know, where it's six and a half foot wall and it has a vaulted ceiling. Although, if I recall correctly, I don't know that the West Coast Cougars out of Oregon uh, have that. So there's a look at our dinette. Let's take a look at the way this Murphy bed works. And I'll flat out go on record and tell you, this is not my favorite functioning Murphy bed. But I will tell you, whether it's the dinette or the sofa, they are definitely using a lot better grade of like foam, of thickness, of just something because their seating is always better in here. But anyway, this is what I call a bendy bed. I like to show you how these work and I've never had a chance to touch a Northwood Murphy bed before. At first I thought it was a jackknife sofa. I'm like trying to rip it off the base here, but it's apparently built stronger than my chicken arms can handle. Ah! It's a rollover sofa. I don't know that that's any better. It's just different. Then there's uh, U latches up top here, one on each side, and you'll see that this is gas strutted. Now you notice how the mattress has not come down with it, but check this out. Like, <laughs> the struts on this are no joke. You don't have to heave, oh, here we go, uh, putting the bed away, you know, singing a little pirate tune with it. You do have to drop the mattress down, but you notice it, you have to actually slide it forward, and then you have to flip that up 
and then you have to finish making the bed. So there's definitely a bit of a process to it. But, let me get, come on. Is this attached? Oh, it's wrapped. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to rip the beds for Hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is not going well. Here's what I was trying to show you. It is a bendy bed. It's not the wafer backbreaker of oh, death like you normally find in so many RVs. That's a thick chunk of foam right there. Now, the question is, is it the right thickness? Is it the right firmness for you? That I don't know. But I do feel that even though it's a bendy bed, it's one of the highest quality bendy beds I've ever seen. So there's that. And you may have noticed I flipped into a super wide angle fisheye lens mode right there. Unfortunately, the layout of this camper, there just wasn't a good spot where I could I could do all that and be in front of the camera. And uh, it's just something I had to do. Sorry. I just, I just don't like that. It feels very deceptive to me uh, using wide angle lenses in that fashion um, all the time. Anyway, big. This is what I'm going to call a true you dinette you see how there is a household outlet down there in case you want to plug something or rather it you know what would go good right there my wife has a love affair with a heating pad for her lower back that wouldn't be a bad spot for her. although there's household outlets by the sofa which would probably be far more uh comfortable and look at this they put an extra large pantry in that slide out Plus, next to the fridge, you have a similarly sized, very good size, maybe not quite as big, but good sized pantry. And they did that because the way that they set up the entertainment center is you lose the overhead cabinet space here. But all you've really done is just move it. Because, you know, if the entertainment center was over there, they, you would have had to give something else up. I suppose you could maybe put the entertainment center next to the microwave, but I don't know. That seems weird. That being said, from the sofa over here, which is where we're at right now, wouldn't be that bad. Something I want to show you is whether it's in the bathroom, in the living room, anywhere on a Northwood, you get the fan, you get the bigger vent fan up there. 15,000 BTU uh, air conditioner is an available option. And we'll see who's been paying attention. Why is the solar battery controller blinking over here? But remember when I said the TV viewing from the bed isn't great? And remember when I said where the TV is, you lose storage? I kind of tricked you because the TV is a storage door and the way that it pivots out gives you easy visibility from the sofa if that is what you like. I figured this could be, see, this is sort of the kind of fun surprises that I find. And this is the stuff where like I get really excited about different things in RVs. It's because I got to see stuff like this myself. I sort of wanted you to have a little bit of that reveal, you know, if I'm being picky, two things down here. I prefer, I'd like this to be some wastebasket space, and I really don't like seeing that level of exposed plumbing. I know there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't look pretty, you know. Bigger 22-inch oven, by the way. Side splash to keep the grease at bay, which is wonderful. And by the way, that Zamp solar controller that we looked at, uh, that can handle up to 510 watts of solar. So I think you can throw like three of their bigger panels up there, like their 170 watt, five watt panels. And um, that's, you know, that'll pretty much be maxing that controller package out right there. Um, the, the dinette, by the way, there's drawers in here on full ball bearing glides, which is great. The back side of the bench though, there is storage available from the outside. But look at what is going on like around the whole Murphy bed over here. So you might notice Oh, that is a full drawer. It must have slid shut. The bed is not centered. It's slightly asymmetrical. And you're going, why? Why? Why would they do that? And the answer is because it is generator prepped under that larger housing over there. So they couldn't exactly make it symmetrical. But that also means that on the left, you've got yourself a bigger closet for Uncle Gary's sundresses. Yes, sir. And a practically perfect place for Cousin Ricky's PJs. And I do believe the last place we got to check out is the Potty Palace back here. Um, 
the the way that some of this is arranged reminds me a little bit of like a Cougar 22 MLS or a Grand Design Imagine 22 MLE, I believe. I, I, I get, I always want to say MXLE or something like that. Anyway, first of all, I was, they angled the toilet just right. Just chef's kiss, perfect. Awesome space around there. You see good space under that as well. Um, a tub instead of a shower was an interesting choice uh, for me, but the taller ceiling with the vault is very nice for headroom up here. I'm about 6'3 for reference, and the shower head is on the inside wall to make it at the tallest point. Again, all of these have that bigger uh, vent fan, and I mean, take, take a look at this big chunk of space over here. Like I said, this bathroom reminds me a lot of a Cougar 22 MLS, but the toilet doesn't feel like it's in the kitchen and don't feel like i'm gonna be crapping where i'm eating junior you know what i mean um and just to give you an idea they're using a four speed high exhaust fan on here and uh if i just put it on like one this is the lowest setting and just <laughs> it gets the job done now there's a bit of a give and a get with this slide out um when it's retracted, you cannot get to the back of this. Again, this is a floor plan very similar to the Rockwood 2104S, which is the same thing, by the way, as a Flagstaff 21DS. And I mean literal same thing. And it has some of the same challenges as a result. And that is the fact that you can't get back here. But that's because they built it with a bigger bathroom. So everything is a push and a pull. So what I was curious about is I was wondering... Can we put the Murphy bed down in transit? And I don't know, but I'm not thinking so. Let's find out. And a yeah, no. This was an immediate, yeah, no, obviously not. Because before you can even put the bed down, you got to be able to roll the sofa over. Which you can't do. <laughs> I don't think the bed would have come down anyway. But if you appreciate the fact that we actually take the time to check this stuff so that you know before you even need to call somebody and spend time on the phone or before you get to the point that you're maybe thinking of spending some money on one of these things. Hit that subscribe button. Let us know that we're doing a good job. Let's hop outside. Now this is one of the very few Northwoods I think is potentially legitimately half ton towable. And I say that not just because of its smaller size and the, and the fact that it's short and has tandem axles, which will certainly help the ride in handling, but uh, the fact that it's about 6,000 pounds dry weight. Now, Keep in mind, these have a pretty hefty cargo capacity, plus you might put some water in the tanks. Um, she's gonna weigh more than 6,000 pounds once you're towing it, but uh, a lot of tow package half tons will still handle this one safely, comfortably. That being said, I don't think you would regret having a three quarter ton and up. I don't think you need to go diesel, three quarter ton gas, but would handle this very nicely. And I'm just, sorry, I'm kind of laughing. Um, they really want you to know that this one is outfitted with the off the grid package. I mean, Look at this. Off the grid. Off the grid. Off the grid. Off the grid. <laughs> like, okay. I think we get it. Anyway, so what are you getting in that optional package? Um, it starts up here with a wrap on the awning so that when it's stowed away, the awning isn't being demolished by the sunlight. I personally feel those speakers are way too high. Um, down below that, you see uh, the extra, like, uh, you know, lighting that takes you into... That is weird. I've never seen that from a factory, but I'm looking around at the other Nashes and I realize that is what they do. They use a big and a little handle. It looks like they built it with this handle and then they aftermarketed the bigger handle, but no, that's how they do it from the, why would they do that? Why, what is the benefit? Somebody, I'm not understanding that. Anyway, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Um, the water heater, they're using a larger 10 gallon vessel on this, which is very uncommon. Off the grid package, in case you weren't aware, this is equipped with the off the grid, off the grid, off the grid package. Gives us the knobby tires. Also, you see the little more uh, aggressive shock dampener there uh, between the uh, axles. Now I've noticed Northwood doesn't seem to do a lot of stable steps here on these Nashes. I don't know if there's a specific reason why, other than sometimes stable steps, like you see those uh, over there on those Cherokee uh, Alpha Wolves, if you are off the grid, well, sometimes you're on some wacky, uneven ground, and those steps don't always want to meet up with the ground too awful nicely. So maybe 
these steps are a little more conducive to that. I am a Midwestern park camper nerd. If, uh, if that is right, wrong, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section, please. Please, please. Now, Murphy beds usually don't have good outside storage. That's a nice chunk of space right there, but notice it's not a full pass-through. It's because it's gen prep on the other side. Uh, now, the off-the-grid package is also giving us those larger 40-pound propane tanks up front and the little cargo rack above that. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I'm noticing that. Another really cool thing about this, like, I looked at this and I went, why is the power tongue jack head so high? And I realized it's, it's, the head's not high, it's a long shank tongue jack, so this can more easily hitch up to trucks with a lift package. That's brilliant! And that's the kind of stuff I don't see in the mainstream marketplace back in my Midwestern home every day. Uh, you know, this is why I love seeing all these different things. These regional kind of campers like this. You learn and see and experience. Uh, there's just a different way of doing it. You know, there's a different culture out there. It's very exciting. Um, the uh, RV has a basic battery solar tender standard. You can always slap on a portable panel like you see right here. And on the roof, you're going to see the off-the-grid package gives us a much larger panel to go with it. Every Nash, by the way, is prepped for an onboard generator. And you have the option of slapping on a, uh, I think it's a 3,600-watt generator from the factory in that compartment. Or, obviously, we could get you one here. Like, if you're looking at this camper or one like it and doesn't have a generator, eh, we could take care of that. Very similar. I, I mentioned in a lot of ways, this is similar to those Rockwoods and Flagstaffs, or rock staves, as I think I'm going to call them from now on, um, with the slide face storage. But look what they did behind the pantry. Not just the cool under the dinette space, which is awesome. I love that they gave us easy access to that. And I love that they gave us easy access to this. But the shelving is just a whole nother level of thought and consideration. It's just... It's all the little details. Now, take a look at this. This is a Schwintec slide out. Schwintec slides are fine, except they don't do very well when heavy weights are involved. So you notice how they added a third set of gears to that, basically to you know, be able to provide the kind of uh, function and reliability that you're going to want. And I feel pretty confidently if there's something that we can just kind of take at face value from Northwood at this point, it is function and reliability. And this is the weirdest thing. I've never seen this ever in my life. The converter panel is outside on this RV, but I watch a lot of videos where sometimes that's hidden behind a slide and that's stupid. Because what if you blow a fuse and the slide is retracted and the box is covered by the slide? You have to manually override that slide, which sucks. I've done it. I've done it on any type of slide that's out there, I've practiced on it at least once. None of them are fun or easy. So the fact that they put this out here, because there was no good space apparently inside to put it, I have a lot of respect for. Something else I think is kind of cool is they show you there's a little switch on here. Flip it one way if you got a lithium battery on it. Flip it the other way if you got a lead acid battery on it. You don't have to be an electrician, which is awful nice. A couple other little odds and ends here. Black tank flush kind of between the rungs of that ladder, hidden by the tire a little bit, is our accessory hitch on the back there. Um, it says 250 pound load rating on it. That almost surprises me because like on their Arctic Fox fifth wheels, the, the big brothers to these, their rear hitching has a 500 pound rating. Now it's not the exact same assembly, but Northwood builds all their chassis in house. They are not running on like uh, industry standard uh, chassis from like LCI. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, with like an LCI chassis, but they want to make sure that they can build and control this stuff in-house. I feel like they're underrating that hitch. Now, I, I base that only on what I've seen of the other bigger fifth wheels, but maybe they're on a thicker, heavier chassis that can handle it. Got a little gas grill quick connect coming off the side of this little girl too. Of course, all LED tail and marker lights. And I don't know if you noticed, but it also does have reverse travel lighting, which is uh, kind of cool. And with the off-the-grid package... I realize I'm talking about the back of the RV and I'm standing on the side. Stand by. As I was saying, with the off-the-grid package, we gain the benefit of an additional, like, light bar back here. One of those, it almost looks like the kind of lights that you'd add to your, your vehicle, you know, when you're doing the off-roading. And, man, I gotta tell you, uh, I wish I had this view in southern Michigan. This is just gorgeous. Like, I didn't realize this entire area is basically... 
Like Salt Lake City is like down in a bowl, just like surrounded by mountains. It is just breathtaking here. I, I really, really like it. Sorry. Anyway, up top here, I just got distracted by something gorgeous. We've got the standard factory 45 watt battery tender, but with the off the grid package, you also upgrade and get an additional 175 watts off that big panel there. Um, now, uh, either way, you're still going to get that double plug ZAMP port right there that runs to the uh, charge controller. So, uh, if you wanted to get like the base package, if you were looking at one of these that doesn't have the off the grid package and you wanted to bulk up on some solar, she's still capable even in her base form. And look at that classic, almost like little cargo rack back there. That being said, I advise you to be very uh, modest with anything that you decide you want to like strap to the roof of this thing and bring with you. Um, I like to call that the Aunt Edna carriage. You know, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, they strap Aunt, uh, Aunt Edna to the roof. That is what that is. <laughs> so like I said, I'll leave a link or two in the video description of some similar things out there. And I would like you to chime in and let me know what would you go with and why would you go that route instead of this or would you go with this instead of whatever else? Be very curious to know. Uh, if you've never joined us before, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can catch all the other things that we have on top of the thousands of videos already in our library. And folks, any and all comments and feedback you're willing to offer, I'm willing to try to scan through and watch. I am the sole person who does all that. So if someone replies, you know you're talking to me. Until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.